Every word you speak is something your mind, body, and psyche work to make real. Your mind is like a Ferrari. And if you have Ferrari driving lessons, you can get that Ferrari to do amazing stuff. People who are in a state of frenzy or high passion also don't always experience or notice pain because that state alters how the pain receptors in your mind interpret pain signals. That's how painkillers work. A lot of the time they alter the pain receptors in your mind. And guess what? You can do that actually without painkillers if you want to and if you know how to. So the first thing people confuse about pain is that they believe it is coming from a single fixable source. In truth, our pain is really coming from our mind. So the neuroscientist Ramachandran went as far as to say pain can be an opinion. We feel it because of how our brain interprets input transmitted to it. And when you say things like, I've got chronic pain, I'm in so much pain, it's agony, it's killing me, I'm dying of pain. You have a very different reaction to when you say, well, I have got a mild niggling little headache. I, I've got a slight stomach ache, but I'll be fine in 20 minutes. Yeah, I have got a little sensation in my gut or my stomach or my foot, but I'm dealing with it really, really well because then you will change how you feel about it. And I've had surgery and, and been through lots of experiences and I never say pain. Like the nurse would go, are you in pain? I go, no, I'm in a little bit of discomfort, not pain. Because every time I said pain, they tried to give me more drugs and more drugs. And I, no, I'm not in pain. I'm in very mild discomfort. And I found that if I could get myself in one position, like, like a little mouse in a nest and keep still, I actually would feel no pain at all because I didn't want to take morphine. I wanted to get out of that hospital as fast as I could. And I thought, no, I don't need pain because I don't need a painkiller. If I'm not in pain, I'm in discomfort. And getting in a position and sleeping a lot was perfect for me. It doesn't have to be the way for you, but it's just an example of how you have the power to choose to use different words about a symptom. For instance, when I was giving birth, I would never say labor, labor pains, because that's a negative word. Labor is hard. I said rushes and signals and symptoms. When someone said, have you got postnatal depression? I'm like, no, I've got postnatal euphoria. I'm so in love with this little baby, I thought I would never have. So some of the words we use, postnatal depression, agony, surgery, invasive, excruciating. You've got to be really mindful to change those words to niggling, mild, slight, hardly noticeable, because the words you use actually dictate how you feel. It's like a biofeedback. Not only are you sending signals to your body by the words you're using, this is chronic, you're also interrupting the signals coming back to you from your body. So the mind is sending signals to the body and the mind is interrupting signals coming back from the body and never say my headache, my stomach ache, my migraines, because when you call something my, you own it and your body is less willing to let it go because my is an ownership word. Never say my, oh my headache, I've got one of my crippling migraines. I'm having one of my anxiety attacks, it's the. The headache is very slight and it's, I can already feel it going. That may sound too good to be true, but that's what a placebo is, the placebo effect. What you believe a drug is and what it will do for you will have more of an effect on your body than the compounds of the drug itself. So create different expectations in your mind too. You know, I gave birth using hypnosis and it was extraordinary. And I can't say it didn't hurt, and it was amazing, and I felt like I was on a ride to Disneyland, but it was an experience. I had a root canal also using hypnosis, and it wasn't perfect. I didn't lie there and think, oh, this is amazing. The hardest part of using hypnosis for dental is having to keep your mouth open for so long, but I was so relaxed and so chilled, and I took my mind to a completely different place, and I honestly didn't notice it at all. So if you're using hypnosis to manage pain, to minimize pain, there are many things you can do. I have many clients who can say, I've got an ag I get agonizing headaches and I teach them to imagine a dial going from zero to 10. What level is a seven? Well, let's turn it up to eight and then nine, then 10. They go, wow, you've made it worse. I know, but now let's turn it down. 
because you're beginning to see the power you have to maximize or minimize pain. And then we use that dial and we turn it down and we turn it down more and we turn it down more because thoughts have an effect. You think of eating, your stomach rumbles. You think of sex and you become physically aroused. Every thought has a physical effect and indeed an emotional response. When you think of pain, and focus on pain, here is a rule of your mind. Whatever you focus on, you get more of. So when you focus on, say you've got a burning pain and you decide to focus on being in an ice cold bath and imagine your skin is cool and comfortable, that's where you go to. When you focus on my stomach as in spasms, I'm feeling cramp, it's horrible that's where you go and if you focus on something different you feel different whatever you focus on you get more of the words you speak and the thoughts you think become a blueprint that your mind body and psyche move towards and when you change your words you change your blueprint and you get to minimize pain to lower pain to even in some cases completely erase pain the source of your pain is not the source of your problem. For instance, imagine you have headaches, but that's because your back is not aligned. You might have a knee problem because your hip is not aligned. So it's important to understand that when you have a pain in one area, it doesn't even mean it's coming from that area. An RTT, Rapid Transformation Therapy, really helps people with rewiring their mind at a deep subconscious level to change the neural pathways, to change pain receptors, to have your mind look at again what pain is and to pay attention to your language, watch your language because your words and thoughts and actions lead to how you're feeling about anything and indeed everything. The mind's very good at becoming judge, you're a jailer. It's to protect you. You know, if you think about something sad, your eyes fill up with tears, your mind just made a thought real. Think about something embarrassing, you go bright red, your mind just made a thought real. But you can think about removing eczema, having satiny smooth skin. Why are we surprised we can think about having perfect bowel motility, fantastic digestion, phenomenal immune system, a fantastic memory, and our mind starts to make that real. The way you feel about everything is down to two things, the pictures you make in your head and the words you say. But you have to reason with your mind and negotiate, and your mind will always do what it thinks you want. The vortex, I want you to imagine it rather like a big spinning top, rather like a tornado of energy. You can see it just above your head, and it's wider at its widest part than your shoulders. And it's going to heal you, realign you, center you, focus you, release those feelings that are left over from your childhood. And I want you to think of the rotating brushes in a car wash that spin like that, spin and rotate and twist and turn. And of course, the rotating brushes in the car wash are getting rid of old stuff. They get rid of all the crud and the car goes, you know, shiny. You go, oh, my car looks so shiny and lovely. Well, this is the same thing. This water is going to spin through your mind, spin through your body, removing old stuff. So the cure is to praise yourself, to take breaks, to look after yourself, to care for yourself, to nurture yourself, build your praise muscle, see the end because there is an end in sight and do not compare yourself. Don't think, well, everyone else is doing better. How come other writers churn out a book, run six companies, go home and raise three kids and homeschool? Don't compare yourself, you are unique. You're doing it on your schedule. You do not need to compare yourself to anyone ever. Do it your way. It will absolutely work, but please don't go into burnout. There really is no need.